Hey guys, so today I'm going to be looking at people who hope they are wrong. So yeah, let's just get right into the video. Years ago, I dropped a friend at a house where she was supposed to meet a man she'd been on a couple of dates with. Not even a boyfriend yet. The whole place gave me the creeps. And when I watched him hold open the door for her, it just looked off. I don't know why, just a vibe. So I drove around the block and came back. I felt odd, so I went to the door, planning to say she had something of mine and I needed a back. I was hoping to convince her to leave. I heard a scream and I knew it was her. My phone was out like a flash and I was talking to the police while trying the door. Locked. Another scream. I kicked that door with everything I had and it burst open. He had pinned her on the couch, naked from waist down. He saw me and fell off of the couch onto the floor, was looking up at me. And I'll never forget this as long as I live. My friend, who is nothing like this normally, sat up on the couch and screamed, Mother Effa, and kicked him hard in the side of the head. Guy fell over and groaned. My friend started crying and I got her up and tried to find her pants. Police showed up in another moment. He was hauled off. Unfortunately, she didn't press charges because she actually didn't remember most of it and didn't want any further drama. Dude tried to rob a liquor store a couple of years later and got shot and killed. And I'm not ashamed to say I was glad when I saw that on a news broadcast. Oh, nice. I mean, hey, got the karma he deserved anyways. <laughs> nice. Crazy how these people think they can get away with like anything, you know? It's like they're not even afraid of the consequences. They just keep doing it. Wow. One of our residents, let's call him Bill, always woke up at 1am every night to watch TV for three hours like clockwork. Done it for years. One night I noticed it was a few minutes past one and the TV wasn't on. So I go and check on him and he wasn't moving. As I walk up to him, I just go, please don't be dead. Please don't be dead. Please, please don't be dead. I checked his pulse and it seemed fine. Turned out his niece was getting married the next day. So he took the unusual step of using sleeping pills. The other nurse gave him some and forgot to tell me. Ah. Oh. Okay, so nothing happened to him. He was just sleeping. Oh my gosh. That's terrifying. Like thinking someone is dead. Man, that's scary. Sounded like a tornado. I wanted to be wrong, but it tore the roof off of the job where I was working and killed one person. Jeez, that's scary. When I was 11, I was at a little league board game watching my brother. My grandmother was there and was telling me how my grandpa had a bad cold and was going to the doctor to get it looked at. I had the sinking gut feeling that it was lung cancer. It was literally the first thing that popped into my brain. Sure enough, later that month, he got the diagnosis. I felt pretty guilty for a long time, thinking I had somehow willed it to be so. Oh, no. That's sad. It's just a feeling that they had. It wasn't their fault at all, you know? You just think, oh my god, what if it's this? And if it turns out to be that, it's not your fault at all. Wow, that's sad though, because they were young, so they probably thought, oh no, they caused it. Knowing my dad was gonna die in surgery, he went from one doctor that was too worried to put him under because his heart was so frail. He went to another doctor and he was like, oh yeah, this is a nothing burger. You'll be all good in no time. I had trepidations and tried to voice them to him and my mum and he jumped down my throat. He wanted it to be true so badly that any dissent was a direct attack. So I held my tongue and hoped. He died on the table. Oh, It's always the hardest to convince your family. Why is that the case? I feel like family never listens to family, you know, but for some reason, you know, their friend tells them something and they like listening to it. Like seriously, like I try to tell my dad some stuff sometimes and he never listens to me, but then his friend tells him the same thing that I told him and then all of a sudden he's like, oh yeah, my friend told me this. So good. And I'm just like, but I told you that like freaking two years ago, okay? As a substitute teacher, seeing teens interact, I get that gut check way too often. The girl who will get pregnant this year, the boy who will drop out and start stealing cars, the bully who will die by gunshot outside a bar, the weed picked on kid who's angry all the time, that's the scariest. That's the shooter in the making. That's the kid I spent as much time as I can talking to, like a regular human being, try to make them smile, make them realize life isn't all that bad. I'm not a therapist. I don't try to counsel them. I just work on making them feel normal. Man. Bless this teacher. And they're only a substitute teacher too. I feel like those teachers just see everything in kids because they're not there often, so they spot things quickly. But man, it's crazy. When I heard news about a shooting that happened at my house my sister was living at, 
My aunt came to my apartment at 3 a.m. in the middle of a thunderstorm. She had just gotten off work and she had heard about the shooting, but no victims had been confirmed. And so I sat the entire day. I didn't have a working cell phone then, and I had went and used gas stations phone a couple of times, but the police wouldn't tell me anything over the phone. Eventually, I was able to make it out back to my hometown where it happened, and I walked to the police outside the crime scene. They still wouldn't tell me anything. So I was just like on the verge of a panic attack. One of my old neighbors waved me over and we sat on her porch and one of her granddaughters handed me her phone and the news had released some of the victim's names and the second I saw my sister's name on there, I had lost it. I still remember every single second of that. Wow, that's so sad how you have to find out through the news. You know, because I guess police can't tell you anything because they don't want to release anything to the public. But you finding out someone that you love is dead through the news that's terrible. When I was in hospital with my son and the professor of pediatrics kept bringing new students to me and my son daily to observe what I just could not see as a first time mum. The professor would ask me to do this or that with him, then turn to her students and say, do you see? They would say, hmm, new batch of students the next day, rinse and repeat. By day six, I had a bad feeling that something was very wrong, but kept hoping it wasn't. I hoped I was wrong. I wasn't. A few days later, my baby was diagnosed with Duchenne muscular dystrophy. I have no idea what that is. It's a progressive disease causing increasing weakness of the muscles of the arms and legs, the breathing muscles and the heart. That is horrifying. So that basically just means they die early. Most people with DMD do not live beyond early 20s. That's sad. Man, I can't imagine how she feels about that. What the heck though? The doctors didn't even tell her first. Just kept bringing in students to observe the baby and be like, yep, this is what the baby has and never tell us its mother. I'll be pissed as. My husband's brother was admitted to the hospital with a mysterious ailment and my husband flew back there to help his mother manage the situation. My husband called and told me the doctors were trying to figure out things because the test results were distressing but unclear. He told me what he understood about the tests. I'm a medical scientist, but neither my husband nor his mother knows more about medicine or human biology than any lay person, of course, so he could only report the information without knowing much about what it meant. From what he told me, I immediately had the feeling that my brother-in-law would be dead within days. I said nothing because I just hoped I was wrong, and it's not my place to say it anyway. It was the worst feeling I had ever had in my entire life. I never told a soul about this until now. It was horrible knowing without being able to tell anyone. Oh my gosh. I mean, it's not even their fault though. It's, like, it's not even the fact that they knew. It was like a guess. Like, it was a feeling. So it might not even have been real. It's just so sad how these people all feel bad for knowing without telling anyone. But they didn't know. Like, it's just a guess. A gut feeling. Oh man. Meeting a friend's boyfriend. He was an unemployed steel worker and the look he gave me was chilling. I mentioned it to her later. About a month later, she kicked him out. He still had the keys to the place. He was waiting for her one night and beat her into a coma, then sat there for two days as she died. Holy. I guess you just know once you meet someone, like they give you a bad vibe. Man, that honestly sucks because I feel like no matter what she did, she probably could not have avoided that. Like even if she took the keys back, if he really wanted to kill her, he'll do anything he could to kill her. That's just the terrifying nature of some people. Well, that's it for the video. Tell me in the comments down below what your thoughts are. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.